if you've dropped in on replay, thanks for dropping by. So today is Halloween, so happy Halloween. And I am celebrating it by doing a Christmas diamond painting. So I've already finished my uh, Halloween one, which was a custom of uh, the entrance to Tivoli in Copenhagen that has a huge pumpkin head hanging uh, in the archway. So I finished that and went straight on to some Christmas stuff. Uh, I've already finished a small one um, with four snowmen. Only took about three days or something. So now I've moved on to the main Christmas one for me. And this is by uh, Diamond Dots, Diamond Painting Company. And this one is called Winter Wonderland. So I've just really started it. And because of the size of the canvas, it's laying sideways. Um, this yellow area here is the star at the top of a Christmas tree. So the Christmas tree goes this way. Um, and these bigger drills, special drills, are uh, Christmas decorations on the tree. So I will be posting um, updates every Wednesday on Instagram at Diamond Painting Gym. So if you want to see the progress of this one, um, follow me on Instagram and you'll see a picture every Wednesday. If I manage to get a decent amount done, um, I sometimes also post a picture at the weekend, but um, Wednesday for sure. So this one is a bit different from anything that I've done before. It uses normal round drills, these little things. Um, <clears throat> round drills, but it also has special drills. And um, it is a partial as well, which means not all of the canvas uh, has drills on it. Some of it is just a printed area that isn't sticky. Um, and sometimes uh, companies do that to get a bit more detail in things. It's actually really a picture that you're looking at and they combine that with the, the diamond painting. Normally when I do diamond paintings, the whole canvas is covered in drills. So this is a, definitely a bit different for me. Something that I haven't done before. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, it's going to take quite a while to get this done. Um, try to remember, I can't remember the size. It's a slightly unusual size, so I'm just checking. Um, an app that I use uh, called Gems Flow. So I'm just going to check the details on this. As I said, it's from Diamond Dots. It's called Winter Wonderland and it is 90 centimeters by 61. So 90 centimeters wide and 61 centimeters down. Hi, Carly. How are you? Happy Halloween. Doing well, making lasagna. 
Um, I'm okay. Still, as you can probably hear, having problems with my throat. Uh, this has been weeks. So I don't know what's wrong. It's not sore or anything. It's just I always sound as if I've uh, been smoking cigarettes for most of my life. And I don't smoke. So I began to sound a bit like Rod Stewart. <clears throat> so this is my first uh, experience of diamond dots very impressed the canvas is uh, really nice the drills are very shiny as well this one does have ABs. Um, three, three different colours of AB. Red, yellow and white. Yeah, it's got um, three different specials, just uh, round ones. Um, we've got yellow, uh, that are the big ones, and then we've got red and blue that are the same size. Um, I'm working on the canvas sideways because of the, the width of it. So you're looking from the top down. This yellow blob is the star at the top of a Christmas tree. And the special drills, they've put them in as uh, Christmas baubles. So it's the first time I've worked on one that has that um, normal drills and then special drills in the same thing. The only ones that I've done so far with special drills, the whole thing is special drills. So a bit different. Um, it's a partial as well. Um, I'm curious to see how it works. Uh, put that in the wrong place. Um, I'm curious to see how it works. This is what happens when you work on symbols sideways. I've got like an upside down T and a T. Uh, they are they are quite a bit different, but just uh, losing concentration there. I'm glad I noticed it as soon as I put the first one in. Yeah, it's uh, definitely different. But I have noticed that the drills are very shiny. Um, just the regular drills. It's also got, well, I think I said ABs, yeah. Three different colours of AB. So it's going to be uh, very shiny. Very glittery snow. Because uh, one of the ABs is white. I'll be posting up a whip on Wednesday on Instagram so I haven't got any pictures of it so far yeah there's no faces but yeah yeah that's I was, you must have came in just after I was talking about that Um, I know they've got one of a, a wizard uh, diamond dots and the wizard's face is just printed it's it's not uh, drills so they can get more detail but it just seems kind of weird to me because i'm used to doing the whole thing drills so when you walk past the whole thing shimmers um because that would mean that the wizard he's like he's 
his hat and his, his robes and stuff would be glittery, like because they're drills, but his face would just be printed. And it, it just seems a weird combination to me to have a, an area on a picture that doesn't um, glisten like the rest of it. But I don't know. Um, like I said, I've never actually, I've seen the the pictures, but I've never actually seen one. So this one, the main thing that's printed is the sky. It's a night sky, uh, trees and snow. There's a, a sort of log cabin type thing, a snowman with a sledge with presents on it, I think. Um but the part that is printed is the nighttime sky and the full moon. So you'll get more detail on the moon than you would if you were doing it with drills. But like I said, it's going to mean that the sky isn't going to be glittery like the rest of it. So I'll have to wait until I've finished it to see what I think. Not something that I normally do. Got one with a face printed from Craft Buddy. It's actually an interesting. Oh, yeah, that, like I said, it, initially I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like that. Um, but they must think it it's nice enough if they make it and sell it. So we'll see. But this is the only one that I've got. That, that's like this um, with the printed and the drills so a bit different but a lot less uh, confetti than the past two that I've done and it's round drills so it's going faster than uh, the previous two which is quite nice I'm not used to having big chunks with the same colour. So I really want to get this finished before Christmas and uh, get it on the wall behind me for my unboxings and stuff. Just made a tell this morning I've done and to do. Didn't know I had so many, you know. I think I'm uh, nowhere near you, but I think I'm getting close to 50 to be done. I've got another three on the way, so they should be here pretty soon, I think. I nearly did it again. One of the symbols is like a thick 
upside down T with a sort of a brownish tan background. Another one is a capital T the right way up with a green background. But it is quite easy to get them mixed up. So how many do you have, Carly? Spill the beans. Are you not on a no buy? I vaguely remember you said you weren't going to buy anymore until you got some done. I've just remembered I was actually going to do the Christmas mobile on my next live. <laughs> I just remembered now, so I'm not going to do it. I'll do it in the next one. It's just that I was working on this and I thought I haven't done a live for a while. So I thought I would come on, see if anybody was awake. Whoa, 79. 137 to do. And how many years do you think that is going to take? My mat has slidden down. And need to move my laptop. It's determined. Don't know what's happening. That's better. I can see the whole thing. <clears throat> I am. Um, I'm okay. Thanks. I've got a bit of a rough throat. I've had it for weeks. It won't go away. How are you? How is Wales? Wet? Is it Halloween? It'll be wet and windy, rainy. Is Halloween a big thing in Wales? I'd imagine it is. It's not, it wasn't that big a thing in Denmark, but commercial, commercialization has caught up with the Danes. Um, lots of pumpkins and Halloween candy and stuff well before Halloween. And now uh, it's Halloween and the Christmas candy and stuff has been in the shops for about three weeks now, something like that. <laughs> three years a lot of them are small yeah that's the thing I mean you can have a lot of diamond paintings but if you have uh, these small ones um, that have the special drills they don't really take that long normally um, things like bookmarks and Christmas cards and things I mean, it really depends what size the diamond paintings are a lot of mine are pretty big um, I don't know what the sort of average size would be. 60 by 80 is one of my favourite sizes. But I do have uh, I do have quite a lot of smaller ones. Okay, is that it? I think so. The Diamond Dots canvases are uh, really different. I don't know what it is about them now. Don't know, just different. Still got a cold, very wet Monday. Yeah, I thought it might be. Uh, so don't know if there'll be too many trick or treaters. What do you call them, Em? Is that what you call them? You call them trick or treaters. Am I banging that in the microphone? Um, in Scotland, I mean, I think now they call them trick-or-treaters, but when I was a kid, they were called geysers. They were geysers. And they would come to the door, and uh, they'd be invited in, and they sang a song or told a joke or something before they got whatever they got, like nuts, a handful of nuts or an apple or something like that. 
now it's just basically kids going around uh, filling their little baskets with sugar. Things have changed. Must have been a big... Yeah, 60 by 80 is definitely my favourite. Um, because I use an A2 light pad and I can fit a 60. So it does. It can be 60 high because like this, I've turned it on its side. Um, this one is slightly bigger and I've already forgotten the size. Let me check. It's a kind of an unusual size, this one. It is... <clears throat> 90 by 61, so slightly wider than normal and uh, slightly higher. But I don't think this is going to take too long because uh, it is a partial sky uh, isn't um, isn't sticky. So the sky is printed and I think it's a full moon that's printed as well. So you get more detail on it than you would if you were putting drills on it. You get finer lines. Uh, I've never done one like this before. I'm, I'm curious to see what it looks like with parts of the picture being drills. And I've got special drills as well, which is a kind of weird combination, having normal round drills and having special drills on the same picture. So this is called Winter Wonderland from Diamond Dots and it's sideways um, because um, of the, the width of it. I can't have it 90 across, I've got to put it on its side. So the yellow splodge here is the star at the top of the main Christmas tree and the special drills are uh, Christmas baubles. There's more of them further back. Um, I've already done this area here, I don't know much you can see. So I'm working up to the top of the canvas going this way. So I've got another one sec, no, I've got another two sections this size, two more this size before I reach the top. So um, I'll be push posting a, a whip up on Instagram on Wednesday. No bookmarks or canvas things, a lot of 30 by 30 by China companies, so yeah, that's a, a, annoying when they, they give you a size and it's wrong. My new one's from DIY Moonshop, I don't think I've bought anything. Hi Helen, how's sunny Scotland? Is it wet and rainy as well? Em is saying it's uh, wet and rainy in Wales. My new one's from DIY Moonshop, have arrived. Beautiful quality canvases. I haven't started one yet. Finishing Santa Dog first. Santa Dog. I don't think I've seen that one. <coughs> so as I said, this one's called Winter Wonderland. It is my first one from Diamond Dots. It is, uh, the canvas is really nice and the drills are very sparkly. Um, as well as having the, the special drills, there are three uh, ABs. So there's a white one. So a lot of the snow is going to be very glittery. And uh, there's a yellow one and a red one. Pouring. Yeah. Welcome to Scotland. It's dry in Copenhagen. Um, a bit cloudy. But yesterday was a really nice day. It was the sky was just blue, like that sort of blue that you get at this time of year, crystal clear. It was quite, uh, I'll say warm, but I mean, it wasn't cold, definitely wasn't cold. Okay, next. <clears throat> what I've done with this, I don't know if other people do this. Instead of using um, the key, like your A4 sheet of paper, I don't think I actually got one in this, but it doesn't matter. Um, the A4 sheet of paper that you get that can sometimes accidentally land on the glue and get stuck and rip. Um, instead of using that, what I do is I cut out the key from the side of the canvas like this. So 
I, I put a um, cover minder on the top to weight it. So I can just set it anywhere I want, just pick it up and put it where I want. It only takes up this much space. It doesn't take up like an A4 sheet. The main thing is if it accidentally lands in the glue, uh, there isn't much glue, but if that had been paper, um, that would have been a disaster. I would have a big piece of paper stuck to the glue there. So doing it this way, I just find it more convenient and I don't have to worry about this accidentally landing on the glue because if it does, it just loves back off. So maybe a handy hint for somebody. Because I trim the sides off anyway. Um, I've started using the magnetic frames. So I keep the top and the bottom uh, on the canvas and I use them like to fit the magnetic frame. But I trim the sides off. Yesterday was nice, but a bit nippy. Or very... Oh, okay. The cold weather's probably going to head its way over. But it's not been too bad. What is it just now? 14 degrees outside. 14 Celsius, which is, uh, I would say, that's pretty reasonable. That's T-shirt weather in Scotland. Um, beep. 57.2 Fahrenheit. Not too bad. The last day of October. <clears throat> okay. Next. 24. 24. Another brown. Yeah, I've sort of had a bit now where it's pretty dull um, because it's trees in the background and it's night time and the trees don't have uh, much foliage on them so I've just sort of missed all the nice and bright and sparkly bit and come up into quite a dark area up in this corner put the symbol on the bag of diamonds I don't follow the legend or sheet of paper just normally put the symbol on the bag of diamonds Okay, so you, what do you mean? You you cut the symbol out the key or you write, write a label or something? I'm going to need more than that. Put in a label with a label maker. So you can actually print like all these weird and funky labels. Like all these shapes. Oop, go back a bit. And yeah, roughly. Yeah. So you can print all of these. I mean, obviously the letters are easy. But it's just you get these uh, ones that aren't really, you know, I don't think they're standard. So you print labels every time you start a new diamond painting. Well, I suppose maybe some of the, some of the labels might be the same, but you're going to have some that aren't. I do it totally different. I just, uh, my Tic Tacs are all numbered 
and I work by numbers. That way I don't have to change like that tic tac box number 34 is always tic tac box number 34. I never ever have to print another label for it. And that's the way that I work. Uh, this one doesn't actually have as many as that. Um, but the ones that I've been working on recently had 90 colours. So it's just the thought of writing 90 different symbols and then having to write another probably 70 or something maybe the next time um, doesn't appeal to me. So I've I just numbered them and I've, I've done that for a long time. So even the diamond dots, this is a bit different, but they've got the numbers on the side. I don't know if that's focusing, but like 10. So 10 is box 10, which is this one. And that'll be whatever color is number 10 in the next diamond painting. So I just always number, use the number. It's a lot easier. Well, I'm saying a lot easier. It, it, it takes a lot less time when I'm setting up because all I do is put these all uh, away and then I'm ready to just start. They're already labeled. Yep, stick the symbols in bags. The diamonds come in. I think I would get confused. Yeah, that that is the that is the one downside. Um, if you've got a number, um, it, you can you can get uh, confused by that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Have I got a number in this one? I don't. Well, I do. At the very end, the A B drills at the very end. You can see it says number one, number two, number three. But I don't go by that. I'm still going by these numbers on the side. So this is 29, 30, and 31. But because these are special drills and there's only three different colours, it's basically a big yellow um, and two smaller, uh, and smaller reds and smaller blues, like two other uh, colours. And that's it. And there's very few of them. So they're still in the bags. Because I know what they are. I, I don't need to label them or anything. It's pretty obvious. <clears throat> but yeah, I know what you're saying. It's like if this if the symbol on the print is seven, um if you if you're not concentrating, you could just go seven. Oh yeah, I'll pick up container seven. And container seven actually isn't what seven is. I mean I mean it, very seldom works out. It does with some. Um, I've done some small ones where one means one and two is two and three is three and four and four. That makes it easy, but very few work like that. So it might have seven on the canvas, but your actual container number is like 26. And you accidentally put number seven. Um, it can happen, but I think it's one of these things that when it does happen, you tend to remember. Like I double, I always double check. Like before I start, I always I get it ready, and then I look at the list again, and I look at the at the containers again. Um, and so far it's worked. I mean, there's always a chance it's going to get messed up, but um, it hasn't happened yet. But that is that is definitely a potential problem. But to me, it outweighs the having to relabel 90 colours or rewrite 90 symbols. or uh, That is just too much work for me. So the numbering system works fine. But there is a potential problem with it. I mean, everybody comes up with their own thing. I mean, the main thing is that you come up with a system and it works for you. But I think it's good for people to see how people work and how people organize their stuff because then it gives them an idea and then they sort of look at it and think, well, yeah, I think I like that idea. And then they try it and then guaranteed they're going to think, oh, yeah, but yeah, they do that, but I think I'll maybe change this bit. That happens all the time. Everybody gets their own thing, like the containers. 
Um, I use Tic Tacs. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the Tic Tac containers because they're too small. Um, I've got two cases that hold 80 containers each. And uh, I don't really have any problems because I also use um, Craftmates Lockables, the 2XL size. So if I have a lot of one colour, like here, um, hang on. Look better. Get rid of the light. Um, so number three, you know, you can guess is three ten, and then number fourteen is a different color. Number twenty one is a different color, and number twenty eight is the white ABs. So if I get a lot of one color, I can uh, use this, and I've got like four of these. But I did have one that had 26,500 310s and they all went in. I just basically filled this, the four containers, all the way along. It was just 310 and I had 26,500 310s in there and there was still space for more. So they hold a lot. Yeah, I've only worked out the bags once. I just did it to try it. It was like resealable bags, pre-labeled, the best. Like, to me, the best option is bags that come that are resealable and they already have the number on them. You got the large Tic Tac containers. Um, I couldn't find bigger. So mine are um, standard, standard size. But I did a video about how I use them because I've got, between the two cases, I've got 160 boxes in them, or 160 containers. Um, and each container holds a thousand drills. So I don't have any problems. I mean, this one, this one's only got, uh, well, not counting those special drills, 28 colors. Um, so what I do is, if I have more than a thousand of a colour, like we'll say 50, I've got like 15 here. So in my, my numbering system, I've got, oh, hang on, before I do that, I'll go to the first one that I have more than a thousand. So I had more than a thousand number eights. So what I do is I've got number eight, and then I use an empty Tic Tac. I don't label it. And then these are both, eight uh, I'll try and put them so it makes some sense and then I've got number nine which is a different color so nine is there and then I've got ten which is a different color again but I had more than a thousand of them so I've actually got three containers of them and then I'll run the space here number eleven different color again so that's the way that I do it. If I have more than a thousand, I add another container and I move the containers all along one. If I have more than that, I put in two. And then the way I use them is if I'm doing number 10, I take the last one and I use that until it's finished. And then that goes back into the, the ones at the end that don't have a label. And I move number 11 back and then when I finish this one in number 10, 11 goes back again. And then when I use this container in number 8, number 9 moves up. And then they all end up back where they were at the very beginning. I found for me, um, that's the best system. As I said, people come up with different ideas, but I was just letting people see the way that I do it. And I have them in the, the Tic Tac cases because they've got um, a foam insert so the boxes sit in a slot and they don't move, so they don't slide around. Um, if you have the sort of standard 64 case, the plastic case, when you take um, a box of Tic Tac, uh, a, a Tic Tac container out of the box, um, the other ones tend to slide or fall over. Um, because I'm on a tilted table, so they try and slide. And 
it gets really annoying because one will fall over and you have to take two or three out to get your finger in to flip the thing back up again. It's really annoying. Whereas these sit in inserts, they don't move. So I, I'm looking at it just now and I can see that I'm working on number 24 because I've got 24, a gap, then 25. So it's it's obvious what I'm working on, whereas the actual container that I'm working from is just sitting at the side and it has no label on it. With the old one, uh, cases could slide down into that gap and and just get you totally mixed up what, what was happening. So it's these foam inserts and in the, in the cases that really made the difference for me. And it works really well. I think the other thing is you just get used to whatever you've ended up using. And if it works for you, it's, it's that. It doesn't really matter what anybody else does. I'm working on a, one called Winter Wonderland from Diamond Dots. I'll show you a picture in a minute. Just putting some likes on. Um, <clears throat> I have a thumbnail. So I've just sort of started it. I'm working up from the bottom. So it's on its side. This is a star at the top of a Christmas tree. Hopefully, I need to move the light. The light is so annoying. Now you're going to get the camera. Well, that's the picture, which doesn't actually show very well. Camera doesn't like light stuff. But I'm working on this side over here. There's a Christmas tree there with a yellow star. You can't make it out. And then some trees with no leaves on them. That's what I'm working on just now. And then you've got this uh, sort of log cabin -y type place. And then there's a, a snowman at the other end. And there's a sledge there. I think there's a Christmas tree on it. Well, it's called Winter Wonderland from Diamond Dots. And it's quite big. It's uh, 90 centimetres wide and 61 centimetres deep. You see how shiny these drills are. That's me just moving the light over. They are very, very sparkly. None of the green ones are ABs. So if you look at like this area, this is like browns and black and greens. They're not ABs, but you can see very, very shiny. Hi, Jean. Thanks for dropping in. How's the foot? Good, glad to hear it. Just in time for all that Christmas dancing you're going to be doing. Off to church. Filing in for the preacher today. Oh, okay. You better not be late. Well, 
have fun at church and have a good day. Thanks for dropping in. It's good to see you. Uh, my feet, my gout, um, is not bad at all. I'm, I'm, I'm on uh, three times the medication I was on at the very beginning now. We've been stepping it up. Um, I've got a blood test due on, I forget, the 7th or something, I can't remember. Got a blood test and then I've got a telephone appointment with the doctor just to talk about the results, but I think it's going to be okay. So as long as I keep taking the medication, um, I shouldn't have any more problems. It's really weird doing a diamond painting where I'm just sitting here and dot, 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 dot. It's been so long since I've heard one like this. Oh, well, that's not true, because I had the, the four snowmen. But even that didn't have sections where I could just keep working the same colour. It really makes a difference. Um, you get a lot done in a short period of time. And that's why people like round drills. Definitely easier. And you get very few uh, misshapen drills or little uh, tabs sticking out. You do get them, but not as much as you do with square. It's a lot faster to use. You don't have to line them up because they're a circle. Did they know? Uh, yeah, it was uh, gout. And I ended up getting it in both feet. And they said that, uh, like the latest specialist I went to, she said that if they had treated it at the very beginning, with uh, steroids, if I'd got a steroid injection at the very beginning, it wouldn't have uh, dragged on like it did, because I had problems for months. She said that once it flares up really bad like it was, it takes a long time for the, everything to calm down again. And uh, she said that if I'd got a steroid injection at the very beginning, it would have calmed down within about a week. So, I suppose it's, it's handy to know that if, if anybody else gets gout, um, the quickest way to fix it is get a steroid injection as soon as possible. I had uh, picked that one up upside down, went to flick it off, it stuck to my finger.
I think that's all of that one. <clears throat> So it's one of these. So I need my spoon. What I like about these containers, if I can get it in frame, is when I put the tray up against it, it goes underneath where this opens. So you have to press this. Mm, can you see it? Can't see it. There's a little button. Little button at the end, and that is this purple bar. So these are all locked, you can't accidentally open them. So, what you do is you push that little button in, and then you pop. So, if I move the hmm, I don't know if you can really see that, but the, the plastic, the purple bar moves along. Hi, Nancy, are you going to come to? The retreat in Ontario, Canada. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I've been to Canada. Really, really nice place. Loved it. So that is a safety thing so that you don't accidentally pop these things open and spill drills everywhere. So all I do is I use a spoon. And because this goes underneath, it means if I do accidentally spill some, they still land in the tray. I like that. So take out enough of what I think is enough, put that out of the way, put my spoon back so I know where it is, try a little shake and then carry on dotting. Ontario, um, Ontario, is that on the east coast? Because I was on the west coast. I was, I was, where was I? I was Calgary, Banff, Red Deer, Edmonton, Oh, that sort of area. Yeah, I have no idea what the retreat is. I don't know a retreat in Canada. Sounds quite nice, though. Announcement tomorrow. Is there a big meet-up? <laughs> oh, it's central, okay. That's, that's quite far away from Denmark, though. I decided on a new way of cutting up. I bought an A4 folder with a wide spine and some plastic sleeves for storing baseball cards. Yeah, I tried that um, and I just found it a total nightmare. Maybe not for kitting up. I was trying to do it to store the drills at first. Um, and then it meant because I didn't have one for every colour. If I got, like, say I had one, two, three, four, and then 12 something. If I got five, I had to move 12 along and had to make space so it meant pulling them out the little pocket things and just a nightmare but it sounded like a good idea at the time but when it, in practice it's sucked bev b i don't know bev b big dust floating about there Mm. 
Yeah, any kind of meet up, unless it's in Copenhagen, Denmark, um, I won't be going. Sauce is done, or oh, sauces done, uh, time to assemble, so you assemble dinner, yeah, what was it you were making again, lasagna, I find that the best recipe is remove packaging, pierce film lid, microwave on full power for five minutes, do not reheat, that recipe works for me. Some people sewing diamonds in the wind cup. Yeah, I just found it fiddly um, getting into those little, I think the ones that I got, they were meant for coins. Those little sort of pockets, trying to get a bag folded and put it in and then you end up with more than one bag's worth so everything has to move along again. Um, I just use uh, baseball card boxes and resealable bags and then I put a little label up in the corner you've got to assemble lasagna I'm quite good at disassembling lasagna yeah you've got to do all that layer stuff I like lasagna Tammy makes uh, lasagna now and again she started making vegetarian lasagna which just sounded so wrong to me but I actually like it. So I think it, it's more the taste of the stuff rather than the fact that there's no meat in it. If the sauce tastes good, even though it doesn't have meat, it's still good. Hi, Mike. Thanks for dropping in. Happy Halloween. Are you going out trick-or-treating tonight, Mike? No, I'm celebrating Halloween by doing a Christmas diamond painting. I know, I was just beginning to think that. Um, Tammy's actually in the kitchen now. She's making, uh, I can't remember, it's a new recipe. Um, but it is like a tomato sauce thing. Um, spaghetti squash something i can't remember something new something that we've never had before and it takes four to five hours so she's in the kitchen with her ipad watching i don't know what she's watching she likes watching uh like moss and was it midsummer murders like um detective series from the what would that be, Mike? Midsummer Murders? 80s? 90s? Inspector Morse. She likes that. So she watches stuff while she's cooking. She likes to cook. Scared of the ghosts. Yeah, it's, it's just easier just to go to the supermarket and, and buy a bag of candy. Just sit and stuff your face in the couch. The only thing that's different about this one is in the... I was going to say the meat. There's no meat. Um, in the, the main sort of veggie stuff, there are black olives. And I don't like black olives. No, we're, I'm definitely not vegetarian. But, um, yeah, we've been sort of cutting back a bit on the meat. Um, it's just sort of gradually been happening. But I ended up getting gout a few months ago, and it took months uh, to get rid of it. And uh, red meat is not a good thing for me to be 
eating because my body cannot break down, I forget what it is, can break down something that you get in uh, red meats, beer, um, sardines, mackerel, uh, I can't remember, there's a whole list of stuff. So I'm sort of cutting back and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm definitely eating a lot more vegetarian than I used to. But no, definitely not a vegetarian. I was at Burger King yesterday and got a, I can't even remember what it's called, a new one to me, Dub, double onion something or other. It was really good. And I had uh, ham and pineapple pizza the other day. Some people say that pineapple should not go on pizza. Yeah, um, yeah, I read a lot about it. Um, uh, your feet is the most common, but like you said, you can get it in your hands, you can get it in your knees. Um, I'm really glad I never got it in my hands. It was really bad at the beginning. Um, I got it in my right foot, and then it sort of calmed down a bit, and I thought it was going away, and then I ended up getting it in both feet. But they gave me a steroid injection into the knuckle, or the joint, um, which wasn't pleasant, but that sort of helped calm things a bit. And they've stepped the medication up three times, so I'm now on what they wanted me to be on, but for some reason they had to do it in stages. So that's why it's taken so long. But uh, yeah, I actually sort of forget about it now. But yeah, it was really, really bad at the beginning. Done. Yeah, the, the thing that put me off olives, and I still remember this as if it was yesterday, and it definitely wasn't yesterday. Um, my mum had bought a pizza, and it had, I forget what age it was, it was a long, long time ago, but it had uh, this black thing in the middle. And, of course, being a kid, I wanted it. So uh, she baked the pizza and she said, yep, you can have it. I don't know what I thought it was going to taste like, but it didn't taste good. It was a black olive, half a black olive, just sitting in the centre as a decoration. And that put me off olives for good. So Tammy was showing me this new recipe. She was showing me it last night and she was just sort of skimming through, showing me pictures. And I said, oh, that looks good. And... I said something about what I thought was kidney beans. I said, oh, it's got kidney beans in it. And she said, ah, um, that isn't kidney beans. And I was like, what is it? And she said, no, I'm not going to tell you, because if I tell you, you won't eat it. And I said, but it looks like kidney beans. And she said, yeah, but it's not kidney beans. So eventually she told me, and it's black olives. So she said, it's, it's cooked for four and a half hours or something so she said the flavor will be dispersed through everything else and the tomato uh, the the tomato sauce will sort of change the flavor and you won't even notice it's black olives so we'll see i don't know what the what's going on in my throat it's been like this for weeks but it's not sore it's just rough I like salt licorice though. I don't know. I'll, I'll report back. But it's taken like f between four to five hours to make, so I'm not going to be too critical about it. I think it'll be okay because I, I like all the other stuff that's in it. And as Tammy said, I think that the tomato sauce will 
really um, take over. I'll add more sweetness to it, I think. But I'll find out. Tea. I miss some teas. 19. Lovely green. Oh, no, it wasn't teas I did last time. It was the upside down teas. Hi, Laurie. How are you? Are you still working in the casino? I find it hard to believe that you're actually working, Laurie, and the speed that you're going through these diamond paintings. Laurie's completing diamond paintings nearly every day. Yeah, that's <clears throat> definitely not something I would do, but I mean, uh, she likes to cook, so everybody needs a hobby, but cooking definitely isn't one of mine. The only thing that I make um, is stir fry. I like making stir fries, but I'm thinking total time, including chopping up the chicken and stuff um probably an hour and a half something like that no i, I never moved to copenhagen for work yeah i, th I think laurie's addicted to red bull nobody works that fast Finally back in a day shift. Oh, that's something that I never mentioned. I don't know why. Um, I got a job. I start tomorrow. It's just when you said day shift. I'm back shift. Four till midnight. So I start tomorrow. Working in a hotel. Ugh, that was wrong. I think. No. Have been there. No, no red bull. Just working on twice a day. Well, I'll still have time to diamond paint because I don't start until four. So I'll have some time in the mornings. I don't know exactly what time I get home because I need to get the metro from the airport and then I need to get another metro. Uh, working in the kitchen, talking about food, working in the kitchen, Helen. Uh, job title is, um, what is the job title again? Uh, I can't even remember the title. It's basically just helping with everything and anything. Kitchen Steward, that's it, that was the title. Kitchen Steward in the Clarion Hotel in Copenhagen. Um, that's partly why I haven't been on much, because I've been away getting interviews. Um, so I was in yesterday for the final interview. Uh, I met the head chef. And uh, it went really, really well. Um, seems like a really nice group of people. And uh, they are very, very friendly. They told me that everybody in the team comes to work, looking forward to work, and with a smile. Now, I have never worked anywhere like that, so... They seem to be genuine about it. Um, just seems like a really nice team. And because the COVID thing basically closed down most of the hotels, um, they're they're starting recruit starting to recruit new teams because what's happened is people have left the hotels and then they've got other jobs and so now the hotel industry is picking up again and they're looking for people that 
they can rely on and people that will work together and uh, yeah that was really good for me um, but it is hard to get work when you aren't Danish in Denmark so I start uh, four till twelve initially they might chop and change it slightly depending on the workload obviously they want more staff in at busy times but the kitchen doesn't close until 11 o'clock at night the walking um the walking's fine um i can i can walk about as normal again in fact at times i forget that i had to go which is good So this is my my last evening of freedom. I'm going to be working in the evening, so uh, no diamond painting, but I'll be doing diamond painting during the day before I go to work. Uh, I speak some Danish. Um, uh, yeah, I tell a lot of Dansk. Um, I don't have to speak Danish for this job, but the chef... Um, the the head steward who I had the first two interviews with, um, he said that everybody speaks English because they have, I think, it was fourteen different languages. The staff speak like between them. There's fourteen different languages, so they they all speak English. That's the common language, so that works well for me. Um, but he was saying that the chef. Uh, he's Danish, speaks English, but he likes to try and get people to speak Danish. And I don't have a problem with that. Um, I did take Danish lessons for a while. Um, but then I, I never, um, because I wasn't working, I never really practiced it. And um, it'll be good for me to to have the chef sort of pushing me a bit. He was doing that at the interview. Um, but just a bit of fun. But um, I mean, I went for a, another interview and that was in Danish. I had to do the whole interview. Uh, no English allowed, uh, which went OK. Um, but I, I'm definitely out of my comfort zone when it comes to speaking Danish. I understand a lot more than I can say. It's the pronunciation. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah, 14 uh, people from all over the world uh, work in the hotel. So everybody speaks English. In fact, they said that they've got some that don't speak Danish and speak a tiny amount of English. And I thought, how can you work doing that? They said they manage to get by. Um, just pointing at things can can help. So... Yeah, they seem uh, they seem very very friendly. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Checking this. Hello. Hi. How is your five hour mm -hmm. cooking marathon going? Well, it's ready to be simmered for about three <clears throat> hours. Um, I just wanted to let you know that Shelby and Amanda and Halpin are on their way. Okay. So if you hear some noise out there, it's just I asked them to buy some snacks for Shelby because we ran out last time he was yeah. here. So okay. they're going to buy some at a maxi zoo on the way here. Okay. And then the so just in case, yeah. just so you okay. know, the apartment's not falling down. Yeah, it's just Shelby. It's just Shelby. Oh, Ka box. yeah, Carly's, Carly's making lasagna. Ooh. 
I love lasagna. She said she was going to assemble it. <coughs> I'll sit down and get it disassembled. Okay, I'll do it in a bit. Okay. She's gone again, mate. Yeah, so she's got <laughs> three hours left. Um, yeah, she was just coming in to say because uh, Tammy's eldest daughter uh, is, is coming uh, for dinner for this uh, vegetarian, can't remember what it's called. Um, and she's bringing her dog. And Shelby is two years old and he is a black German shepherd. So uh, chaos will reign. Yeah, it's definitely, Helen. Um, it's really weird not having a job. So thankfully, I fi finally found something. So I'm going to head off uh, pretty soon. I don't want to be uh, ignorant and uh, sitting in here when Tammy's daughter turns up. So I'll just finish this colour. You know how it goes. Finish this colour and then I'll go. So don't know if much left in that. Mm. Okay, I'm going to do the star, and then I'll we'll go. The star is. A, B's, I think, is it? Yeah. We're 26. So some nice A, B's. A bit of practice with the tweezers. Really getting used to using tweezers now. <laughs> Couldn't read the fridge. Well, I hope you find something nice. Um, thanks for dropping in. Hope you have a, a good Halloween. I hope you get lots of candy when you go around the doors. So these are yellow ABs. And using the checkerboard, I always use checkerboard. It doesn't matter if it's square or round. I always do this. I feel it just makes things straighter. You can see I'm getting quite good with the tweezers compared to what was like the very first time I tried it. And the drill just pinged away and I never found it again. But I know what I was doing wrong. I was holding the tweezers far too close to the bottom and I was pressing far too hard. So I hold them quite far back. Um, but these um, pointy tweezers of death as some people call them these are like heavier than the sort of tin ones that you get with some kits and that makes a difference I think you've got a bit of tension a lot more control over them normally they're black these ones are gold but they are basically the same um, if you get them from uh, who is it? Oh, I can't remember. There is a company, they come, they're pink. Most are black. I think Diamond Art Club are just unmarked. Uh, Ever Moment are exactly the same, but they have the brand name on them. I'm trying to remember who the pink ones were, but I can't. Use tweezers, DP, you can double please. Drills are good. Just keep pricing. Yeah, I've already, I've sort of got to 
the point where I'm, I feel really comfortable using tweezers, but I don't know. I think doing this for a long time, it would start to hurt my fingers, I think. Or maybe pressing slightly too hard still, I don't know. But I do find it uh, easy. Never ever thought I would. The only time that I used tweezers was to pick up drills that had landed on the glue. Or if I'd put the wrong drill in the wrong place, I use tweezers to tweak them back out. And usually use a pen to put it back in. But I don't know, just uh, all that practice of dropping drills on the glue paid off. So as I said, this is uh, a diamond painting from Diamond Dots called Winter Wonderland. I will be posting a whip uh, on Wednesday on uh, Instagram, Diamond Painting Gym, if anybody doesn't know. Yeah, Spell Queen, that's it, Laurie. It's Spell Queen, they do pink tweezers. And they're branded, it has the name on them. But they are all basically the same. It's, it's just they've got a different finish on them. But they're the ones that I like best, the ones that are really sharp. But uh, don't leave them lying about if you've got kids or pets um, without the cover on them. Um, because they're, uh, they're very, very sharp. So that's it. I'm going to go before our guest turns up. So thanks for dropping in, everybody. I hope you have a happy Halloween. I hope you get lots of candy when you go around the doors. And don't get arrested. So that's it for today. Um, the next time I do a live, I will remember I'm going to do the tree for the Christmas uh, mobile. The one that was broken the first time, the second time, and finally not broken the third time. So uh, I'll uh, I'll be working on that on my next life. When that'll be, I have no idea. I have to see how things go with this job. Yeah, not exactly sure when I'm going to go to sleep because I won't get home until about one or two o'clock in the morning. So I need to work out my sleeping pattern for that. So that's it for today. And in the meantime, take care. Be safe.